Tyskenes interesse for Lofoten startet ikke med andre verdenskrig, for allerede i 1889, nærmere bestemt den 21. juli, seilte et imponerende skip opp raftsundet til Digimul. Ombord i skipet var keiseren av Tyskland, keiser Wilhelm den andre. Den som kan fortelle oss mer om dette er lokalhistoriker Geir Svensen fra Digimul. Yes, it uh, all started with a painting exhibition in Berlin 1888 where the so-called Lofoten panoramas were exhibited. And uh, the Kaiser wrote in his memoirs, <clears throat> he was so uh, impressed by those pictures, he decided there and then to go to Digimul to see if it really was as beautiful as those paintings suggested. And uh, here oh. we can see the master uh, himself. This is the man himself. This is Wilhelm II. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a part of the panorama, the so-called uh, Kaiserblick, the 360 degrees view yeah. from the mountains above the moon. So it was purely on the strength of him seeing pictures in Germany that drew him here. Yes, he was uh, so impressed and he also wrote in his memoirs when he arrived here for the first time he had the photographs from those uh, paintings with him to see what is most beautiful, art or nature. Mm. And he wrote, I could uh, immediately decide and see that nature is more beautiful than art. Yeah. And up on the hill, the so where now the so uh, Empress Hill is, they built those uh, uh, stone man, so they yeah. call them. This is the original one. Yeah. And in a newspaper from 1889, the journalist wrote that uh, the emperor himself threw away his jacket and were carrying stones for <laughs> this thing here. Yeah, this would date back to... 1889. That is 1889. And he changed the map of Norway, so to speak, because this is the typical tourist map uh, used by German uh, from German shipping companies and so on you will see there's no mention of Lofoten for example no. you will see no mention of North Cape it's all a question of Dingmund between Ålesund and yeah. Hammerfest and Lyngstede so we started something very special because the very first cruise in history yeah. started from Germany in 1890, it was called in the footsteps of the Kaiser, and it was to Dingmar and other oh. places. He is the father of the modern mass tourism in northern Norway. Of course, there were tourists before him on small coastal vessels, yeah. single tourists, but mass tourism was triggered by him because after that, every man with money enough had to make a so-called Northland journey. So the the brand Lofoten in tourism mm. is not as old yeah. as uh, we might <laughs> believe. This uh, cruise industry to Norway lasted until 1939. This seems to be a link between uh, Germany and uh, America. Um, German America Line, North German Lloyd, uh, the French Line, yeah. uh, Royal Mail and Already tourism was on the yeah. way at this point. It was uh, booming but there were never uh, talk about Lofoten. No. It was a question of Dingmar yeah. and Trollfjord and uh, Spitsbergen yeah. and so on. Obviously the uh, it was the power of the mountains and the, the natural landscape all around it, it that it, had this immense sort of draw to, for people. Yes, uh, and the light. The Don't light, forget the course, light. Must never because uh, in all those books written they always uh, talk about the light. Mm. They talk about the mountains, they talk about the sea, the glaciers, the light and the people. They seem, it looked like they found something special here. Uh, some kind of uh, Nordic refuge, more or less. Mm. They uh, were seeking something they didn't find as yeah. well. 